Thank you, Anthony. And thanks for all coming. I know uh, right after lunch it's hard to do these sort of things, so here we go. I'm going to be presenting a package uh, called Datriant that I, I work on with these fine fellows listed here. So um, this package gives us what we call pers persistent Pythonic trees for heterogeneous data. So without further ado, the problem we're addressing, well, it's a problem depending on how you look at it, but scientific research often proceeds organically. So you guys all probably have directory structures somewhere on your file system, on your laptop perhaps, that look kind of like this. Maybe probably a lot worse than this. This looks actually pretty organized. The thing is, though portions of science, the science we do, are planned, the process is largely pretty messy. And this is especially true for simulation work, if I can just say that, um, because we can try lots of different parameters, try lots of different things, and we end up with just lots of stuff that we've tried um, and then we have to make sense of it. And this is true even for experimental work. It's also true for um, if you're doing field work, you come back with data sets, you have lots of stuff you've collected over time. There are some possible solutions. We could use relational databases. Um, that is if we're pretty confident in the schema we're choosing up front, because it's really hard to kind of adjust schema after you've started. We could use document databases because those are more flexible, um, however, it may not be possible to store all the things you want to store. Really, these aren't really that good of a fit for things like simulation parameters, system descriptions, the raw trajectory data. If we're doing simulations like I do, we run a simulation. The raw data is how the simulation progressed with time. And then we might also store intermediate data, that is, derived data sets from that trajectory that take a while to process. We'd like to store them and hold on to them. And there's existing tools. You know, these fields have existed for a while. A lot of existing tools often require customary file formats. And so we have some constraints. As I said, I do simulations. Specifically, I do molecular dynamics simulations. That is, we do proteins. And we try to get at how these proteins do what they do, even if we know already what they do. So the result of a simulation is a trajectory. That is, the positions of all the atoms with time. And so we get something like this that we have to make sense of. But I don't, I don't just run one of these simulations. I usually run hundreds or thousands. And they all have different parameters, trying different things, trying to understand different phenomena. And furthermore, the MD simulation isn't just that trajectory. It's pretty much the entire tree, the file system tree, or all the files that encode what that simulation was. Um, that is how it was made, the parameter choices, and things like that. So instead of trying to use a database solution, we could just use the file system itself. There's some cons to this. It's often littered with irrelevant files, you know, random text files, um, things you might have saved that you, they're completely irrelevant to what you want right now. Um, it is hierarchical, but it could be inconsistently structured, so it can be hard to work with. But there are some pros to this. It already stores anything we need, kind of by definition. That's what makes it useful. And existing tools do work with existing formats. So Datriant is an attempt to take advantage of the universal nature of the file system while minimizing those inconveniences. Um, and something it introduces is the concept of a triant, and that is a discoverable directory that possesses some metadata. A triant is a directory with a special state file. And if we make one of these with Datriant, create one called maple, that will produce this directory, if it doesn't already exist, with a JSON file that stores the metadata for that triant. This state file does a few things. First, it serves to mark the directory as a triant. This is a triant right here. It includes a unique identifier, that UUID, that funny looking string. So we can always recognize what, which triant this is, even if it disappears somewhere. And it also stores metadata elements that distinguish that triant from others. So human readable things like tags and categories, which I'll talk about. So triants, they're walking, talking trees. And here's a triant. This is a, an artist depiction of a triant with some data. Um, and they can be uniquely identified even when moved. So that UUID allows us to do that. And they can also speak through the metadata that we store. Beyond just that, a triant can be used to directly introspect and manipulate its file system tree. So if I have a triant, this existing one called NAPE0, this is simulation data of my own, I could have a look at what's there. These are directories, these are files. And I could, using get item syntax, select a particular directory out, and then have a look at what's inside of that, for example. 
We can do more though. We can manipulate directories and files directly with tree and leaf objects. And so if I grab the setup directory as a tree, and perhaps this leaf um, object or this um, file em.grow that's inside of setup emin em.grow as a leaf, I could directly read that, for example, and have a look at what's there, um, or feed it into something else. Uh, tree and leaf objects are actually lightly wrapped pathlib paths, so if you've worked with pathlib before, you kind of understand what that means. They don't need to necessarily point to existing directories or files. In this case, the leaf I made here does point to something that exists, but if it were to not exist, then it would it simply would give exists false. And this is useful simply because it reflects the file system as it currently is, while allowing us to work in the abstract with paths. Um, so we could take a tree object, like that tree setup, that setup directory, and I could use a globbing pattern to select out um, files and directories that match a particular pattern, like these ITP files. I can get at the trees that are inside of setup. So doing tree.trees would give me build, emin, and pre-production. And then I can use kind of pandas semantics.loc to get at um, a subpath within those and get back all of these. And as I said, these paths don't necessarily need to point to existing files. Uh, three of these, in fact, do not exist. Or two of these out of three do not exist. The last one does. The whole point of trance is that they're sanity preserving, not for their sake, but for yours, or for mine, rather. Um, so using tree and, tree and leaf objects, we can actually just work with the file system completely pythonically without giving that much attention to where these things live. Um, and this is especially powerful, not when you're working with individual tree ants, but when we have many directories and files we want to work with, uh, possibly all over the file system. And honestly, they're really better in aggregate. What makes a tree ant distinct from a tree is that state file, that stores that metadata that we can use to filter and split tree objects when we have them in aggregate. So as an example, if I have many tree ants, perhaps scattered all over the file system, here I'm making a few, creating this tree called Arboretum, and then using it to create these tree ant objects. I can then gather them up using a built-in to Dat ant called Discover, which will look through the whole tree underneath Arboretum, find anything that's there. In this case, it finds the four I made, oak, sequoia, maple, and elm. And a bit about this object that's, that's spat out. This is called a bundle. It's an ordered set of tree and objects, and it gives convenient mechanisms for working with them as a single logical unit. So you don't need to think about the fact that I'm using multiples. That is one thing. So um, if I could get the relative paths from the current working directory where all these trans live, I could use those pandas semantics to say dot loc, get me a cat on a limb on, in all of these trees, and that will, tell, that will give me those paths directly. Um, I could also glob for existing files. So each one of these treants has a .json file, that state file. I can get it back immediately. And there's many other manipulations that are included in here. I can only just show, show a few with limited time. Um, but a bundle can also subset, subselect treants in pretty typical Python ways. Um, we can do integer indexing. We can do slicing. We can do fancy indexing, Boolean indexing, as well as indexing by name or UUID, if you're one of those people. You can remember those long strings. Um, but in addition to just slicing directly and subselecting kind of in an ad hoc way, we can filter treants on their metadata. We can use tags, for example. So if I set a bunch of tags for each of these treants, like for maple, we make syrup out of it, furniture, it's a plant, just giving these things descriptors we can then use these later. For example, we can look at them in aggregate. The tags for the bundle is the tags that are present among all treants in that bundle. But if we want, we can have a look at the, the tags that are present among any of the treants, that is at least one in there. And we can do set operations with them as well. More importantly, we can filter on them. So if I get all the treants that are good for construction work, or if I try to use get item syntax on the tags, I get back a Boolean index, giving me true if this one, uh, that particular member does have a, that tag, false if it doesn't, and then I can use that to, fancy, or to Boolean index the bundle itself, filter out what I want. Um, we can also do fuzzy matching. So if you had caught earlier, I had some tags that were building and one tag that was for building, because maybe we, I worked with these pretty organically, I just threw these things together. I could fuzzy match the word building, give it a bit of a scope, and then filter on that. Um, we could also get treants that are good for both construction and use for making furniture by giving tags as a list. So this would serve as an intersection of these tags. 
Um, in this case, none of them have both those qualities. Um, but we can build other tag expressions, um, such as by using tuples for union operations as well as sets for negation or negated intersections. And we can nest any of these as well. So if I use, for example, a tuple here, this works as a union, so get me all treants that have both building and furniture tags, or sorry, or furniture tags, or both. And this would function as get me um, all treants that do not have both those tags, so it's a negated intersection. So using these expressions, we can filter treants um, without caring where they live at all, um, perhaps in numbering in the hundreds in very easy ways, using stuff that we've put in previous tags we've added previously. Not only are there tags built into datriant treants, there's also categories. Um, categories are key value pairs that provide another mechanism for distinguishing them. If I add a bunch of categories to my treants, so for oak, or for each of these, I'd add age, type, bark, um, adult, deciduous, mossy, basically giving these things distinguishing characteristics. Perhaps I added a uh, home to this one because I kind of knew where, it, where these things are found. Um, and maybe I added some ca category or one category to all of them, just in aggregate. I can access these categories individually um, just to get at what is the value, for example, of bark. I could do that. Um, never live code. <laughs> Oh, I didn't run any of these cells, so sorry. Yep. Never live code, people. <laughs> um, or we can get the ag aggregated categories for all members in the bundle. So um, if we just close that out, um, b.categories.all would give us the categories in order, the values in order for each, for each key. Um, and when many, many trans possess the same category, we can take a split, apply, combine approach popularized by Pandas um, and uh, Hadley Wickham using a group by. So these things are categoricals, basically. So we can say group by bark. This would give us back a dictionary giving the values present among the treants in the bundle as keys and bundles as values for each one, giving the treants that had that value. Hopefully that's not confusing. Uh, but we can also group by more than one key. Uh, so for example, I could group by both bark and home. And in this case, I get back a, a, only a single group fibrous in California, because this treant was the only one that had the home key. And so by leveraging the group by methods, we can extract treants by category without having to explicitly um, access each one. And just to show how this works, um, and also give some context, um, datrant really just ser fundamentally serves as a Pythonic interface to the file system. So if you're wondering where does this fit, say where would this fit into my workflow, where does this fit into the existing set of tools I use? It brings the values to your existing data sets and analysis results by making them easily accessible and making it easy to pull out sort of meta data sets from directories you have scattered all around the file system. And as data structures and file formats change, as new things come into vogue, um, the same Datrian objects can always be used in exactly the same way um, to supplement those tools. As a quick example, we can use Datriant plus Pandas to do a split, across, a split apply combine across some data sets. So if I gather up a number of treants, uh, each of these corresponding to an MD simulation um, that I ran with some different parameters, here I have 49 of them. I want to examine a bond angle between three atoms. So if I have three atoms, I'm getting this angle here. And I previously collected this and stored this in a bunch of CSV files. I stored, it, I stored um, each data set within the treants tree. And if we have a look in here at just a subselection, if I look inside of the angles directory in each one, we see this CSV file right here, which is the one that I want to grab. We can group the treants by the parameter we're testing. Uh, that is, the parameter I'm testing is called CTH, and I tested seven different values. Here they are. I ran 49 simulations. Each, one of the, each, um, each value had seven simulations ran for it, possibly with different parameters, but this is the one we're most interested in right now, is CTH. And I can histogram these angles as a function of this parameter. Um, fairly straightforward. I have 49 different CSV files scattered about in different places. I don't really know which one of these sims each one's coming out of, or rather which ones have that CTH parameter, but I don't really need to care. It's stored inside of that state file, so I can do a group by on CTH. I can then use um, each of these groups to extract out the CSV files as an aggregate seven of them at a time, build a pandas data frame out of it, concatenate, extract out a series, 
and then plot each one. And so we get what we wanted to look at, which was the distribution of angles as a function of this different parameter choice. And this is using data from 49 different simulations. I've used data from many more simulations uh, myself. This is an example. We can also build domain-specific applications on top of Datriant. So custom Triant subclasses can be defined in these domain-specific packages to address domain-specific needs. One such example is MD synthesis, and since I do MD, um, this is appropriate. This enables us to do very high-level management exploration of the MD data we collect. And internally, it uses MD analysis, which, by the way, there's a talk at 4 p.m. Please go to that if you're interested, uh, to parse trajectory data. And it makes it possible to write analysis code that can work across many varieties of simulations. We don't really need to care about that I ran this simulation in this, with this software package, this other simulation with this one, and I have to use different choices of names and stuff and do lots of gymnastics. I don't have to care. I can abstract this out using um, trance. And most importantly, it allows us to work interactively with hundreds of simulations with very little effort. Um, and that's, that's the big draw. Where are we going? Well, Datrian is a pretty young project. It does have a growing development community. There is plenty of room for new contribution at all levels if you're interested. Um, Datrian is also a namespace package. If you noticed, I was importing datrian.core earlier. This is the dependency light um, core of the, of the Datrian package. But there's plenty of new functionality for Triants that can be provided by other packages. Um, for example, there's datrian.data, which gives convenient interfaces for um, storing and retrieving pandas and numpy objects in HDF5. And it does that internally with pi tables and H5Pi. It makes it really easy to just throw stuff in the file system and then pull it right back out. And it can do automatic aggregation on whole bundles of these things. Some ideas, perhaps we could do datrian.git, which might give an API for version controlling a triant as a git repo right there without having to do too, much, um, too many backflips. Datrian.hdfs for treating triants that are inside of a Hadoop file system. And perhaps even datrian.remote, in which case you might have triants that live on a remote cluster and you want to treat them as if they lived locally. That could be possible. But um, these are just ideas that I have that I will not have time for, but I would love to hear um, from other people who are interested. So let's talk. Uh, you can find us at uh, datrain.org. You can join our mailing list. And if you're interested in the package, the packages are available on both PyPy and our Anaconda channel. So you can kind of install this. And before I finish, I'd like to acknowledge um, all the people that have helped to not only write code, but influence the direction of the project, influence design choices, all these folks, as well as the person who enabled me to do all this. Um, my boss, who's sitting right there, um, just, just to embarrass him. All right, that's it. Thank you so much. I'll take some questions. So the question was, what are leaf and tree wrapping? Is that correct? The read, the read method on leaf. Ah, OK. So leaf.read is, is wrapping um, for a file descriptor read. Or yes. yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Yeah, it's, it's just wrapping that. But it's attaching it as a method, so it's just easy to use. Sort of, You can just fire these things off. Yeah, that's the idea. So the question was, um, how would I use this if I have two things that live on two different file systems? Could I? You want to, like, your laptop, and then you want to open the desktop, and you just want to change the files over? Yeah. Or would you want to change the files over? Yeah, actually, just two weeks ago, we merged a built-in sync method for Triants that allows, it uses rsync internally. And you can include includes and excludes to maybe only sync part of the tree, upwards and downwards. So that, that actually exists. Um, as it happens, yeah. Are the UUIDs deleteristic at all? Uh, so if I accidentally deleted the JSON file from the directory and I wanted to recreate it, so that's where I can remember the thing. Uh, 
so, yeah, so the question is, are the UUIDs deterministic? Um, so they're not, they're randomly generated, which is by design, right? So if you were to delete the JSON file, then make a new one, basically. You will lose the data that was there, right? The metadata, things like tags, categories, that'll be gone. Um, but Datriant doesn't really care about what the UUID is, it just uses that to distinguish that this is not the same triant as that one. Or rather, if I moved this triant to somewhere else in the file system, it's the same one. It's not just a copy or, or something like that. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so if you have an existing file system structure, can you build it to Yeah. Yeah, so the question is, if I have an existing file system structure, can I use this? Um, yeah, so you can make triants out of any existing directory. So you could just do datriant.core.triant, give the directory name, and it'll stick a JSON state file in there. Thank you.